Hello and welcome to Baiju's Exam Prep IAS. Let's get started and look into our daily quiz. Let's look into the first question. Consider the following statements with respect to Tolkapiyam. It was composed by Tolkapiyar. It is the oldest extant Tamil work till date. It is a unique work on grammar. Which of the statements given above is our correct? The answer to this is 1, 2 and 3. Why have we taken this practice question? Because this article on the PIB makes a reference to Swaminathan Iyer. Who is Swaminathan Iyer? He happens to be a Tamil scholar. It was he who brought to light number of Tamil literature works from the ancient times and it was he who is added immensely for the enrichment of the Tamil literature. As we can see from the article, he popularized works from the Sangam era and has also helped conserve precious heritage as well. There is one of the libraries called as the UVS library. In this particular library, you would be able to see a collection of more than 2200 leaf bundles of Tolkapiyam, which is why we have taken this practice question. So what is Tolkapiyam? Tolkapiyam happens to be composed by Tolkapiyar. It is the oldest extant Tamil work till date. It dates back to 4th and the 5th century CE and offers some of the information on social life, human psychology, political and economic conditions during the Sangam age. It also discusses Tamil grammar as well. Sanskrit influence on this work is also peripheral and very little when it comes to Tholkapiya. Then we also have something called as Yet Tokai. Yet in Tamil basically stands for eight and this includes about eight works that were composed during the Sangam era. Now let's look into the next practice question. Which of the following statements is are correct about gravitational lensing? It occurs when a huge amount of matter such as massive galaxy creates a gravitational field that distorts and magnifies the light from objects behind it. The more massive the object, the stronger its gravitational field and hence greater the bending of light rays. The effect allows researchers to study the details of early galaxies too far away to be seen otherwise with even the most powerful space telescopes. Which of the statements are correct with respect to gravitational lensing? The answer to this is 1, 2 and 3. Why have we taken this practice question? Because this article on the Hindu makes a reference to the gravitational lensing. Let us try and understand what is this concept of gravitational lensing. Let us assume that there is a body, the quasar which is emitting the light. Let's also assume there is a huge mass of body in the space. Let us assume it is to be a galaxy. So it can be a galaxy one, it can be another galaxy two. So the first body is the one which is emitting the light. The second body is intercepting this particular light. So because we have a huge mass of body in this particular case the light does not pass in a straight line but instead it undergoes a curvature that is what is called as gravitational lensing so what happens in this particular case light ideally should have passed in a straight line but because there is another body which can be a galaxy or any space object as a result there is deviation of a light there is bending of the light that is occurring because of the presence of another body in the space that particular phenomenon is what is called as the gravitational lensing. So basically what happens in gravitational lensing? The light that is emitted by a distant galaxy or a quasar in this particular case passes by the massive object in the universe and gravitational pull from these objects can distort or bend the light which is called as the gravitational lensing. Now if you look into the option, the first statement says it occurs when a huge amount of matter such as massive galaxy creates a gravitational field that distorts or magnifies the light from objects behind it. This is the first statement which is the right statement. When we look into the second statement, the more massive the object, the stronger is this gravitational field and hence greater the bending of light. 
such is what is called a strong gravitational lensing whereby massive objects like galaxies can build lines significantly producing multiple images which is called a strong lensing then we also have micro lensing which basically means lighter objects like stars or black holes can also bend light but less significantly so if you have a huge body the amount of light that the bend causes is comparatively more and when you have a smaller body the bend that causes in this particular area would be compared relatively less so if you look into the second option the more massive the object the stronger is the gravitational field and hence greater the bending of light rays this happens to be the second statement which is the right statement now if you look into the third statement it says the effect allows researchers to study the details of early galaxies too far away to be seen otherwise even with the most powerful space telescope so if we are not able to see what is happening in the space we can come to a conclusion that there is a body in middle and we would also be able to see that there is a distant galaxy that is present how because there is bending happening along this massive object we would be able to see through the telescope that there is a particular galaxy but we would not be able to see that there is a galaxy in a far off location but because there is bending occurring in this particular region we can come to a conclusion that there is another object which is emitting the light which is why there is curvature that is taking place so with this particular conclusion they would also be in a much better position to understand if there is a black hole at a distant place or this particular lensing phenomena will also help to verify the existence of the dark matter in the space as well now let's look into the next practice question with respect to giant meter wave radio telescope which of the following statements is are correct it is one of the largest radio telescopes in the world located in nainital it is operated by the aryabhata research institute of observational sciences which of the statements are correct the answer to this is none why have we taken this practice question because this article on the hindu makes a reference to the giant meter radio telescope let us try and understand some of the important facts with respect to this telescope when we speak about giant meter radio telescope where is it located it is not in nainital but it is close by to pune so remember it is not in nainital but it is close by to pune it is an array of 30 fully steerable parabolic radio telescopes observing at meter wavelengths and this is not operated by eris but instead by the national center of radio astrophysics this national center for radio astrophysics is part of tata institute of fundamental research which is present in mumbai so this particular facility was constructed under the leadership of govind swarup who was a pioneer in the field of radio astronomy and he was also a key player in construction and installation of the ut radio telescope what is the significance of this telescope the telescope is used by the experts and astronomers not only from india but also globally as well in the past it has helped in discovery of the neutral hydrogen around other galaxies as well so in the present situation they were able to map the distribution of atom atomic hydrogen gas from the host galaxy of a radio burst for the first time what are these fast radio bursts these are extremely bright radio pulses from distant galaxies that last only for few milliseconds now let's look into the next practice question messier 77 recently seen in news is a or an new exotic planet outside our solar system in the constellation cassiopeia red dwarf star which is about 110 light years from the earth bard spiral galaxy solar array designed by nasa which of the statements best describes about messier 77 the answer to this is bard spiral galaxy why have we taken this practice question because this article on the hindu makes a reference to messier 77 where is it located it is located 47 million light years away in the constellation cetus remember this happens to be a prime example of surfed galaxy what is a surfed galaxy it happens to be a class of galaxies which has an active nuclei it is a galaxy which has an intensely active center that is obscured by gas and dust in the visible light now let's look into the next practice question which of the following have species that can establish a symbiotic relationship with other organisms cnidarians fungi protozoa 
Select the correct answer using the code given below. The answer to this is 1, 2 and 3. This happens to be a previous year question from the year 2021. So this question is speaking about the symbiotic relationship. What is the symbiotic relationship? Let's assume for a moment there are two species in an ecosystem. Both the species derive benefits from each other is what is called a symbiotic relationship. When it comes to cnidarians, yes, it does have the symbiotic relationship with the algae. When it comes to fungi, it is inside the roots of the plants. And when it comes to protozoa, it has the symbiotic relationship with number of species. So the answer to this would be 1, 2 and 3 as they would be able to establish symbiotic relationship with other organisms. Now let's look into the fact of the day. The fact of the day for today's discussion happens to be about Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj Ji. Let us try and understand some of the important facts which can be very important from the preliminary examination point of view. Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj is one of the greatest rulers who has ruled the India. He was born on 19th February 1630 at Shivneri Fort in district Pune where in the state of Maharashtra. He was born to Shaji Bosle who happens to be the father of Shivaji. Then we have Jija Bai who happens to be the mother of Shivaji. Jija Ji happened to be a pious lady. She was a pious woman and because she was religious in her practices, she was able to inculcate all these habits to her son as well. And when we speak about Father Shanji Bonsle, he was a great general. He held the Jagirs of Pune and Supe under the Bijapur Sultanate and Shaji also served the Ahmad Nagar as well as the Deccan Sultanate. From the very early age, Shivaji was put into rigorous practices. He was asked to learn about administration, governance, war and military warfare as well. And after he learned all these practices, he displayed the military zeal for the first time in 1645 when he successfully got control of the Tona Fort which was under Bijapur. So for the first time, he took control of the Tona Fort. He also took control of the Kondana Fort. And as a result, what was happening? There was a clash between Shivaji Maharaj as well as Adil Shah of Bijapur. So it is during this particular period when Shivaji captured both these forts Adil Shah was not able to keep quiet. So what does he do? He arrests Shahji who happens to be the father of Shivaji Maharaj. He puts him behind bars as well. So as a deal of negotiation, Shivaji had to surrender both these forts and had to take back his father. So these two forts which was taken over by Shivaji was given back to Adil Shah and his father who was imprisoned was released by Adil Shah. He achieved great name when he defeated Afzal Khan who happens to be a veteran general of Adil Shah. This was fought in 1659 in the fort of Pratapgad where in the town of Satara where in the state of Maharashtra between the forces of Marathas which was orchestrated by Shivaji and this Adil Shahi troops was led by Afzal Khan. So the Marathas defeated the Adil Shahi forces and ultimately became one of the regional powers which also won the victory against a major regional power which happens to be against Adil Shah. So remember with this particular victory, he was able to acquire a large number of weapons and horses which greatly added to his growing Maratha army strength. In the same year, another battle was fought with the Adil Shahi camp at Kolhapur and with this particular battle, he was able to expand the horizons of the reach in this particular region. Shivaji also raided Mughal territory near Ahmedabad and in Junur. Shivaji also defeated a large force of Shahista Khan who happens to be Aurangazich's maternal Uncle. So what we have is now a clash between the Mughal forces as well as Shivaji. Initially it was against Adil Shah and now it was against Aurangazib forces as well that is against the Mughal army and over a period of time they wanted to end this particular enmity. So what does he do? In 1665 there was the Treaty of Puranda which was signed between Shivaji and Raja Jai Singh who was representing Aurangazib. So basically this particular treaty was signed because Shivaji realizes that the Mughal army in numbers were great and at the same time if he goes on and keeps fighting with the Mughal army he may also lose out on the money front as well as on the men. So in order to prevent this loss of men and money he happened to sign the treaty of Puranda with the Mughal empire. 
in the year 1666 shivaji went to meet the mughal emperor aurangzeb he felt insulted and during this period he was also arrested and put behind bars as well this is where the brilliance of shivaji comes into picture he escapes from this particular area and ultimately comes out of the prison is one of the legendary stories of shivaji maharaj after that there was peace between marathas and the mughals up until 1670 after that the jagir of bera which was granted to sambaji by the mughals was taken back from him shivaji in response attacked and recovered many territories from the mughal within a short period of time and finally in 1670 he also harassed english forces at bombay why because these english forces were also cooperating with the mughal forces as well finally with his military tactics and also with the guerrilla warfare which he was able to bring in he laid the foundations for one of the greatest empires the maratha empire and he was crowned as the king of maratha on june 6 1674 at raigad he took on the title of chhatrapati shakartha kshatriya kulavantas and haindeva dharmodharak the maratha kingdom founded by shivaji was about 4.1% of the indian subcontinent but it grew over a period of time and shivaji fell ill died of ill health on 3rd of april 1680 at raigad and shivaji maharaj is today considered as one of the greatest leaders who has ever ruled india and especially is revered in the state of maharashtra and also in multiple other states in india it is this that we have to understand in reference to chatrapati shivaji maharaj ji so this is it for today thank you for watching all the best